views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Get fired up for Spirit Fire Radio with your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Get ready to shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in these modern times. Bring purpose to your life through practical spirituality and add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Now, here are your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Welcome to Spirit Fire Radio. I'm Steve Kramer, and I'm here with my co-host, Dorothy Riddle. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Steve. Great to be back on the air. It's great to hear your voice as well. So we are on week four of talking about hope. And this week's show, we're going to talk about hope and the spiritual path and your spiritual development. So I'm very excited about this conversation, Dorothy. But before we get started, why don't we let the listeners know a bit about our collaboration? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start. So uh, Spirit Fire Radio is a collaboration between Spirit Fire and the School for Esoteric Studies. And we're both educational nonprofits focused on spirituality. So this endeavor is a really lovely opportunity for both of our organizations to come together to talk about spirituality in ways that you can apply spiritual concepts to your everyday life. And uh, Dorothy, do you want to tell the listeners a bit about the School for Esoteric Studies? Sure, Steve. Uh, The School for Esoteric Studies is... uh focused on discipleship training uh, to uh, produce world servers. In other words, our, our focus is to support people in their spiritual development uh, with the aim of helping them uh, contribute to the common good, not just you know be quietly meditating off for themselves on the side. And I just wanted to mention, Steve, that part of uh, why this... Um, initiative came about was that a couple of years ago, the school uh, actually started an initiative that we call the Intergroup Group Collaboration. You can find it on our website at esotericstudies.net. Uh, what we realized was that uh, many spiritual, uh, spiritually focused groups were working in isolation and unfortunately often in competition. And uh, so we set out purposely to find other organizations that would like to work together. And we are absolutely delighted that Spirit Fires said, yes, we too (laughs) are very interested. We are very happy as well that our two organizations are able to cross paths regularly, uh, weekly, if you will. It's really lovely. And I will just say Spirit Fire has got its own meditation practice called the Practice of Living Awareness. And what makes us so excited about being a part of this is our meditation practice is really focused on ways in which you can take the qualities of meditation and you can take the lessons and the tools that you've learned uh, within a meditation training and apply them to your everyday life, in fact, to create a living awareness for yourself. So, you know, both of us have such similarities. You know, we really are, both of our organizations are are really looking uh, to affect uh, you know, the spiritual traveler in their everyday life because that ripples out, right? That affects everyone around you. So you know, a better word, world for us all. <laughs> Absolutely. So what I've loved about our conversation is that, that, you know, I've, I've spent the last several weeks just realizing that hope is available. You know, these concepts of wonder and uh, love, you know, we hear these words and, and the more we dive deep into them and we realize that we have access to them at all times. And it's just been great to uh, look around and see opportunities and options and be optimistic and realize that that generates hope. It's been uh, really driven home beautifully in the last several weeks. It's been great. Great. And I think it might be helpful to uh, to share with our listeners, any that haven't been with us the last couple of weeks, that when we think about being hopeful, 
we're thinking not just about this kind of wishful thinking of, oh, yeah, maybe somehow it's going to magically happen, but that it's that being hopeful is a combination of that optimism that, yes, a positive uh, resolution is possible, and uh, the willingness to explore multiple options for how to achieve that, that persistence in effort um, is a, a very important component of hope, of being hopeful. And I love that it rings true that you were talking about the School for Esoteric Studies in looking for other organizations to collaborate with because there's paths crossing and there's options. And the same with uh, a meditator who might be uh, simply meditating on the cushion in, in almost a, a, you know, a very insular way that it's really about expanding out and it is about um, optimism and options together. So mm -hmm. it's lovely. There's a quote, Steve, that I'd like to share. It's from um, uh, Robert F. Kennedy that I think really builds on what you've just said. Uh, what he said was, each time a person stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, they send forth a tiny ripple of hope. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, these ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. It's, so, yes, go on. It underscores that whole that whole idea that every action that we take, um, it may it may not in itself bring uh, the you know bring about what we want, uh, but every little every time we act, every time we say yes to the fact that we are all part of an interconnected whole. And then what happens for others matters to us because it actually uh, affects us. We're part of them. That every little act like that uh, accumulates and uh, provides this whole wave of hopefulness. Beautiful. I love in the quote that he mentions daring because hmm. daring seems to be an aspect of hope. Uh, it, it you know because it arises quite profoundly when we perceive limitations, right? Um, because from that point of, of perceived or actual limitations, we look out and, and we hope for something different. You know, we look for, for again, optim, options. And it makes me think of Obama, that audacity of hope. So it's yeah. interesting. Uh, I think spirituality is sort of synonymous with expansiveness. So where we perceive limitations as we look out to uh, move away from that, uh, that actually is the spiritual journey, right? Because we are uh, expanding and hope always wants to sort of expand our possibilities. And I love that that, that is often perceived as audacious or daring. <laughs> yes, yes. I think the other thing that's, that's important in a, uh, the context of spirituality is, you know, they, they call separatism the great heresy. You know, the... the uh, We've talked before about the illusion of duality, the illusion that somehow we are we are different from or separate from or better than or worse than um, other people. And the what hope does is it it bridges that and it eventually if you think of it as a wave, it eventually washes that away uh, because we are in fact all part of a large cosmic, uh, energy field. We are all interconnected and what happens to one happens to all of us. Absolutely. You know, I, I was looking up a lot about Obama during our, all this research for, uh, for hope. And I came across that speech, the ripple of hope speech that you mentioned. And, you know, it's interesting that, that RFK was visiting South Africa when he gave that speech, and it was during the height of apartheid. So we think of separatism, right, during during that mm. uh, time, the height of apartheid. And what was interesting is that he met with an anti-apartheid leader during that trip and spoke about that afterwards 
to on on the radio. And it was the first time that so many people had actually heard about this leader because the government had an enforced ban on any media coverage uh, of this leader. And it's interesting. So walls were built around this gentleman, this voice of hope. And indeed, uh, they sort of uh, – his his message leapt those walls, you know, through the radio waves. Quite literally, I think it says that there was a, a current, you know, of hope that sweeps out. But it's interesting that often, um, you know, these walls of oppression and separation are are there. They are really um, there are so many of them around. And and it's unfortunate. And hope really is this, as you say, uh, a bridging. Uh, it's a mm-hmm. bridging force uh, for separation. Well, it, and this we can bring in another concept from metaphysics, uh, which actually is uh, supported by the research in quantum physics, and that is that energy follows thought. If you really think about that um, and take it seriously, your the focus of your thoughts is where the stream of energy will go. So if the focus of your thoughts is hopeful, if you have an optimistic attitude, if you expect a positive outcome, if you are searching for multiple ways to achieve that outcome, that's where the energy is going to flow. On the other hand, if you are pessimistic, if you are discouraged, then the the energy just kind of coils in on itself, right? It tightens up. It's not available to actually bring about the change that we want. And as everything is energy, we actually quite literally manifest our thoughts. We build the world uh, that we would like to see through our thinking. Uh, it's quite quite powerful. Uh, we're going to go to a break, Dorothy, but I'd like to also talk about just that, about thoughts and thought forms, because we've also got to have clarity of thought and we've got to be able to decipher truth because it seems these days, goodness, with fake news and so much talk about what is real. So we have to also be aware of what thoughts we're holding in our mind that we might think are positive in one way, uh, but we've got to be able to to make sure that there's truth, you know, that they align with our higher truth and the greater good. So perhaps we'll talk about illusion uh, and glamour when we get back from the break. How's that sound? Great. All right. We'll be right back. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Want to help reduce the divisiveness in our world? Each year, the School for Esoteric Studies holds a subjective group conference. This year, our focus is on unity and diversity, the science of right human relations. From April till June, we will meditate together, study relevant writings, and share practical strategies for improving how we relate with each other. Join us to help build inclusive communities. Check on our subjective group conference at esotericstudies.net. That's the School for Esoteric Studies at esotericstudies.net.
Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Hello and welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio where we are talking about hope. Just before the break we were talking about energy following thought and it it made me think of thought forms. It made me think of ideas that we hold on to uh, that can sometimes not actually match reality. That is called an illusion. And there are two aspects of our reality that can certainly get in the way of of hopefulness. They can um, sort of steer hope off the road. And those are glamour and illusion. I know we've talked about them before, but I think it will be interesting to talk about them in terms of hope. I would agree, Steve. And and let me just uh, differentiate the two for our, lead, for our uh, listeners and uh, suggest that we start off with glamour because uh, glamour is a deception or an illusion that is emotionally generated. It's for, for people who are familiar with the three energetic bodies that we have, the physical, the astral or emotional, and the mental. Glamour is in the, ast- at the astral plane, the astral body. Um, and the way that we get at glamour, uh, dispel glamour, which I think we'll talk about in more detail in a few minutes, uh, is with our mind, with clarity of mental thought. But on the mental plane, we can have illusions, and these are the delusions that are mentally generated. So it's not going to help us at all to dissipate glamour if we try to dissipate it with an illusion, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, but, and they're often I, quite linked, huh? They are. They are. So if we look at glamour first, um, this is a really good example of how duality is one of the dynamics that, that holds it in place. It's, uh, and it is intensified by desire. So it's a very strong, emotional, irrational illusion and it's the irrationality that is so problematic we become triggered we become reactive and we lose our sense of moral compass in other words we we don't have you know we we're, we're kind of adrift in this fog of emotional energy that uh is stimulating and we lose track of the ethics of what what it is that is real mm. Very well put, Dorothy. That was beautiful. I think so many of us can can relate to uh, acting from our emotions. You know, our emotions mm-hmm. can be quite big, and for some of us, they can become really controlling factors in our lives. So it's glamour. Is is it? It when your identity really is wrapped up in your emotions, then you are glamorous. You are said to be under the influence of a glamour. And one thing I find interesting is we've even got a magazine called glamour magazine and it's so linked with desire, right? You know, if you Mm -hmm. flip through the pages of glamour magazine, really you have to ask yourself how much in this magazine is actually real. Does it reflect my life? It is really um, driven by our desires and our desires in oftentimes uh, in to become something in fact that we may not be. Uh, I often find that um, that glamour is linked as well to to um, 
forums such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, social platforms, because so many of us are looking for likes or retweets. So whether we've got enough likes on our Facebook page or we've been retweeted a number of times sort of defines our sense of self and our emotional state related to that. So there's a lot of glamours around around uh, social platforms as well. I think people can relate to that. I would agree. Another uh fuel for the fire, if you will, is fear. Fear is a very common source of glamour. And so we and we have uh, these fears uh, being played out in the political arena. I'll just give you a couple of examples, like one uh, one dial or line of, uh, of glamour is, you know, the world is unsafe. Everyone's taking advantage of you. Only I can save you. So that cre- that's a whole a path of glamour nationalism itself you know we are better than uh than other people or we have to protect ourselves from others you see the duality there that's a glamour or in sports my team has to win at all costs or it's a disaster there's a dualistic outcome there um and that's also uh, uh generates that energy of glamour so I would just like to take that a little bit further because when you talk about fear, so it's the desire then to be safe. And and when your response to any situation is always fueled by that fear without you being able to sort of see through the fog of that fear, well, you're sort of out of touch with reality because sometimes – you have been, uh, you know, manipulated. I, I find it interesting, you know, as you said, only I can save you. I mean, we all know in this political environment that that that's been uh, postured a lot. Like I have the only answers, and um, we see that our president relies on Twitter. You know, he relies on social media to sort of rouse attention. And it again, it's that it's that feeling to be loved and appreciated and often triggers people's sense of fear so that they will be moved to respond. So they actually work together. All of these glamours when we're in, it really is just a dense emotional, almost like a cesspool of emotions <laughs> that really has us moving this way and that way, really uh, being uh, manipulated and pulled. And it's really from our desires to see our desires met. And when it, when fear is involved, boy, um, one is easily manipulated. Mm-hmm. And, and as you, you know, as you pointed out, it can be a desire to be safe. It can be a desire to be liked. That's you know part yes. of the social media thing. And another, another way that, uh, that glamours get fueled is, is just, is from within ourselves from adrenaline, right? Uh, the drama gets engaging and addictive um, and and ramps everything up. And remember, in relation to hope, uh, the problem is that this kind of dynamic, this kind of fog, this kind of lack of clarity about what reality really is uh, limits and interferes with our ability to uh, to act in a hopeful manner. Well, and and what's interesting about that is when we're on the lower scale of emotions, you know, when we're feeling despair or when we're feeling fear, we often will default down to the physical body. You know, as you said, adrenaline is released and the physical body takes over. And what's interesting about hope is it's actually there's a lot of qualities of mind in hope. Mm -hmm. So we've got to sort of move up the emotional scale. You know, we've got to get to a place where we're not ruled by these sort of reactive emotions, but we are responding. We're actually creating space. Then the mind can come in because if we sort of think of it stacking as mind is, is on one level, then underneath it is emotions as it gets denser in, in, um, energetic form. You know, our physical body being the densest and then our emotional body and our mental body Well, as the emotions are sort of lower and we have a physical response. The mind isn't often uh, the mind isn't often there as a tool and the mind and hope work very well together. So really um, dispelling glamour or or trying to create um, a world without glamour is glamour is is a world that is a bit more mentally polarized and not so emotionally polarized. So, you know, observing our our responses and observing our reactions um, can 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 work out very well to sort of make sure that your uh, experiences aren't fueled only by desire. 
Right. And so critical analysis, being able to weigh the pros and cons, uh, be able to explore, be able to take a realistic perspective, having mm-hmm. the detachment to uh, to look at, you know, ourselves realistically and what is best for the whole instead of being caught up in this emotional drama. This is part of what we're getting at when we talk about uh, being able to dissipate glamour. Uh, it, it's it's challenging because um, the emotions can be very seductive. You know, they can uh, feel good, and it's more challenging to take that detached perspective and say, well, you know, uh, let's take a look at, at all of the factors. Let's take a look at all of the perspectives. Let's see Dor- what's going to work for everyone. What's interesting about that as well is misery loves company. So isn't it interesting that there's like sort of an audaciousness to that, to just as you said that, well, let me take a look at this or let me pause for a minute. That can be so audacious, especially if we're surrounded by like-minded individuals who are fueled by a similar emotion. And we often group together that way because it's safe. There's safety in numbers, right? And so I find that interesting. And one thing that's great is it's good to have a diverse group of friends, right? Because when your friends can say, hey, I think your emotions are getting the better of you. You know, that's options and, and hope Mm -hmm. loves options. So it's hopeful, (laughs) you know, have a diverse group of friends who are willing to, to call you on, on, Mm -hmm. um, emotionality, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, illusions, uh, often illusions will, will be a factor where glamours are concerned because they're often charged thought forms. And often they're actually thought forms that um, involve a bit of separation. They can be used to manipulate um, in many ways. And so there's, there's a real link between the two. Dorothy said earlier that that uh, glamours are of the emotions and that illusions are of the mind. So illusions can be a really tricky foray. So um, we are going to have to go to a break, but when we come back, I'd love to to talk about those just for a little bit. And um, I think you, listeners will find it uh, very interesting and enlightening. Uh, so Dorothy, we're going to go to a break and we'll be right back. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit glennarice.com. Interested in deepening your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit www.esotericstudies.net. What is a brilliant culture, and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. 
Awareness is universal. Establishing a living awareness through meditation brings peaceful, healthy, and creative well-being into your everyday life. The practice of living awareness, Spirit Fire's own meditation practice, is built on this belief and is designed for every level of practitioner. Each year, Spirit Fire hosts living awareness meditation retreats that allow you to explore the practice in depth at our retreat center in beautiful Western Massachusetts. Introduce yourself to meditation and the practice at the Foundations Retreat. Attend, in silence, a silent meditation retreat focused on mindfulness, presence, and nature. Or be engaged with the meditation sittings themselves at the Deepening Retreat. Start adding to your awareness and attend a meditation retreat designed to cultivate consciousness in your everyday life. For details on attending a Living Awareness Meditation Retreat, visit upcoming events at www.spiritfire.com. Hello, welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio. We are talking about hope and we were talking about glamour and illusion before we went to the break. And I'd love to spend a little bit of time on illusion. Dorothy, do you mind if I sort of introduce the concept of illusion a bit? Go right ahead. And then I've got a couple of examples to give. Perfect. Uh, boy, <laughs> there's no shortage of examples, Dorothy, right? It's, it's, uh, it's an interesting topic. Uh, so illusions create distortions in the mind. We think of an illusion when a magician uh, uh, performs an illusion. We're not actually seeing reality. It's a sort of a it's a distorted take on reality. So illusions are actually thought forms, and they certainly contribute in many ways to this uh, heresy of separateness that we've talked about uh, many times. So often illusions um, are used to serve the personality. So when I think of illusions, when I when I think of, of some that have sort of served uh, served certain types of people. I think of, I think of dictators actually. And I think of, uh, of megalomaniacs because really they are masters of, of manipulation and masters of sort of controlling propaganda. And you think of thought forms that are out there, like uh, during the, during the second world war, there was this idea that Germans were of a superior race or that, uh, native Americans were savages was, uh, sort of an, a thought form that, uh, was not necessarily or actually true at all, uh, within the Americas or that women were not capable of voting intelligently, which is just absolutely ridiculous, but used as a thought form to sort of control. And we see these days this idea that um, all policemen uh, are disrespectful to the black community. And we know that uh, as a fact not to be true, but it can be used to sway people. And if you've got glamours, if you are ruled by your emotions and perhaps fear is predominant uh, in your sense of self, then when you hear something like that, when you hear, uh, you know, that uh, a black teen in a hoodie is up to no good, you may subscribe to that thought being fact. And actually, that is not a fact at all, but could be used in a way to uh, manipulate you. Right. And in fact, we have a term uh, for, <laughs> interestingly enough, for illusions, and that's fake news, right? Absolutely. Um, and uh, it's interesting to me that Tim Cook, the uh, CEO of Apple, uh, is uh, try working with colleagues to find ways to weed out uh, fake news so it doesn't keep replicating uh, throughout the Internet. Um, because we have, and we've had a s several in the recently in the U.S. political arena, the, the whole issue of voter fraud or the charges of voter fraud, the, the um, the statement that very few people were uh, deported when, in fact, uh, thousands of people were affected by the travel ban that was put in place. The uh, the charges that uh, the Obama administration wiretapped uh, Trump Tower, which is there's you know we've now had hearings on that, uh, but all of these take time and energy to uh, to dispel, and that distracts us from the forward-moving activities. And just in case people think that uh, uh, these thought forms 
uh, go away easily. They don't. I mean, you've referred to some of, some of them, but I, this is the from the beginning of this month, the 1st of March, in the European Parliament, a Polish lawmaker said, for the record, that women are smaller, weaker, and less intelligent in a debate about equal pay. Now, he got jumped on for that, but still, the fact that someone could actually make that kind of statement what we need to realize is that it comes from this thought form that is there, that it, that is available to reinforce that kind of thinking. And Steve, I'd like to share a a uh, uh, a quote. It's from Alice Bailey's work that has been very meaningful to me. That I think is helpful in in this whole idea that uh, illusions. You can't just say, "Oh, well, I don't believe that anymore." You have. It, it is as you said. It, the illusion becomes a thought form. It, it takes form, and it has to be then dissipated. Uh, it can't just be ignored. So here's the quote. A gigantic thought form hovers over the entire human family, built by persons everywhere during the ages, energized by the insane desires and evil inclinations of all that is worst in human nature and kept alive by the promptings of humanity's lower desires. This thought form has to be broken up and dissipated by humanity itself. Wow. And, you know, that word evil is uh, such a powerful word. And in the Bailey books um, where you got that quote, you know, often evil and separatism, you know, this idea of division, are, are related. So, and we're responsible, as you say, as it says at the end of the quote, we are responsible for breaking this down. We created it. So only we can break it down. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, as you say, uh, it, once it's there, that's what I find, uh, that I'd love to drive home is once these thought forms are put out, they join that cloud, right? They join that that's cloud. Right. And that's what's interesting about our current president and his sort of obsession with tweeting and this wiretapping uh, sort of illusion, which is total illusion. And we'll, we, you know, we know that it is total illusion, but the fact is that it's out there and it becomes a form that people either bump up against or they get to hold on to and use for themselves. And when you repeat it again and again, and you actually repeat it on social media, so it's actually in print and there it is in a feed that's there forever. And he'll often repeat it three and four times. And then even if it's disproven, it doesn't matter because that, that form is a, a very powerful manipulation, especially when um, people have their, as, as the quote says, their lower emotions or lower desires um, get engaged and add fuel. Um, they're, they're drawn to it almost magnetically uh, to these uh, illusions. So it, it takes, we've got to once again, bring clarity and we've got to bring truth um, to uh, stand in front of these thought forms and, and actually dissolve them and break them down. Mm-hmm. And if, Steve, if I may, I'd like to I I'd like to bring in one of the seven principles that we've been talking about over sure. the last uh, two months, and that is participation. We science has proven this is not just a woo woo concept. Science has proven that we create our reality through focus. That rather than the Newtonian idea that that there's this objective reality that you know things happen lockstep, boom, 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 in a sequential linear fashion, uh, that we live in a probabilistic universe. What that means is that there are many, many possibilities that coexist. And it is our choices, our focus, that precipitate a particular one of those options. So we, we play a very central role in how our society comes together, how our lives are lived. And when you add that to a few, even a few of the other principles that we've spoken about, when you add that to cooperation and mm -hmm. interdependence and interconnectivity, you realize that, that we've, we're in this together. 
and that it, we we participate in creating our own reality. So, you know, we've got to take action. And that's why so many activists speak of hope because they are taking action, but that we've got to be there for each other to uh, create a more truthful environment. I think of Dylan Roof, you know, who uh, not to bring it up too much, but but who who. Uh, who, who murdered the, I think, eight or nine uh, churchgoers in Charleston. And we saw that they responded to his action with compassion and said, you know, you took my loved ones from me, but I, I forgive you and I will not bring your hate into my heart and into the world. They were very aware of glamour there and they wanted mm-hmm. to dispel it with, with heart and with higher vibrations of emotion. And we saw people participate in taking down this sort of white supremacist symbol of the Confederate flag. And that happened all over the South. And so you saw this dismantling in a way of an illusion. So it is really about participating in dissolving these. And and Dorothy, I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful because you see with fake news that so many people are on it straight away, you know, in, in trying to get to the truth. So Steve, I agree absolutely with, with what you're saying. The, the thing that, that we need to keep front and center, though, is that we create our reality and we are responsible for the type of reality that we create. And it needs to be in, um, it, it needs to be in harmony with the truth, as you've said, it, it, with what our actual reality is, which is that we are all interconnected. We are all part of the, the one life or whatever name you want to give to that cosmic whole. And so what that means is that we can't create a reality that only works for me or only works for you. We have to be thinking in terms of the common good. We have to be thinking in terms of the greater good. What is going to work for the, for the best uh, of us all? And whenever people can uh, respond uh, compassionately in a way that leads to a sense of wholeness and healing rather than um, out of anger uh, and hatred, which uh, immediately creates distance and separation, we come one step closer to being who we really are. Beautifully put. And you say when we when we see life as a network of possibilities, you know, you you have said that before, and that all came to mind uh, when mm-hmm. you when when you certain words, you know, that that you that you said have this vibration of expansion. And, and really, when we see life uh, as a network, as I said, of possibilities, boy, then, then it opens up for us and uh, generates hope. So we're going to go to a break, Dorothy, and uh, we'll be right back with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in to Dynamics of Diversity Radio, scripting the new narrative for immigration with leading experts, Kripa Upadya and Steve Tanijo on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This show will remove the noise that often accompanies discussions on this topic and share a new perspective on the dynamics of immigration and diversity, ever reminding us that together we are all at the core of innovation, excellence, and positive change. Visit OrbitLawPLLC.com for upcoming topics. Awareness is universal. Establishing a living awareness through meditation brings peaceful, healthy, and creative well-being into your everyday life. The practice of living awareness, Spirit Fire's own meditation practice, is built on this belief and is designed for every level of practitioner. Each year, Spirit Fire hosts living awareness meditation retreats that allow you to explore the practice in depth at our retreat center in beautiful western Massachusetts. Introduce yourself to meditation and the practice at the Foundations Retreat. Attend, in silence, a silent meditation retreat focused on mindfulness, presence, and nature. Or be engaged with the meditation sittings themselves at the Deepening Retreat. Start adding to your awareness and attend a meditation retreat designed to cultivate consciousness in your everyday life. For details on attending a Living Awareness Meditation Retreat, visit upcoming events at www.spiritfire.com. 
Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLoose.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. Want to help reduce the divisiveness in our world? Each year, the School for Esoteric Studies holds a subjective group conference. This year, our focus is on unity and diversity, the science of right human relations. From April till June, we will meditate together, study relevant writings, and share practical strategies for improving how we relate with each other. Join us to help build inclusive communities. Check on our subjective group conference at esotericstudies.net. That's the School for Esoteric Studies at esotericstudies.net. Welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio. So we're on our last segment of uh, this discussion of the spiritual path and and hope. So I'd love to talk just a little bit in this last segment about, you know, about how we can support that growth. And obviously it is through having a hopeful attitude. Uh, we have a saying here at Spirit Fire that is add to your awareness that Adding to your awareness is actually expanding your reality. It's a hopeful action. Uh, meditation, I would say, Dorothy, is one really, really wonderful way to do that because through meditation, we are aligning. Uh, you know, we, we are creating uh, we are creating well-being within our physical body. We are, we are becoming aware of our emotions and we are creating clarity of mind and focus and the ability to bring some of that mental matter in. So, um, you know, I think that, that developing a sixth sense, that intuition and creative thinking, when we think of creative thinking, that that is options right there. So it's hopeful. I find that just Meditating 10 minutes every day helps uh, with bringing some of that mental matter in and aligning and developing the sixth sense, developing intuition. And within the world of intuition, boy, so many options arise. So that can be one way that I would say uh, that we can certainly uh, support our spiritual growth and bring hope into our lives. Dorothy, how about you? Yeah, well, I I would agree, Steve, but I'd like to put a slightly different – slant on our uh, our discussion of meditation, because what I find is that a lot of people, especially nowadays, associate meditation with relaxation and with uh, kind of a, a very a very personalized focus at a personality level as opposed to a spiritual practice. And so I just want to I, I just want to note that. And to me, uh, meditation is about refining the mind's ability to focus, the, the mind's ability to channel energy, to channel the intuition that is uh, available to us, which is a really important um, pra- practice uh, in terms of dealing with illusion and glamour, is to be able to get in touch with what is real uh, uh, through the intuition. And I think that a meditation practice, a daily meditation practice, uh, is a critical component of that. But I would, I would say that ultimately, meditation is a way of being twenty four seven. It's not just something that we do ten minutes a day. It is a, it is a way of being uh, in relation to the whole and of uh, being of service to the whole. And so seeing our meditation work, because if you think about it, 
we've been talking about the fact that our thoughts, how we think, uh, we create our reality. Well, we're doing that through meditation. So that, to me, the meditative attitude is the way of being in the world in service. Absolutely. I would I would just stress to the listeners that uh, though that we had a um, we had a meditation retreat here this weekend and we talked quite a bit about different types of meditation. And I hear what you're saying, Dorothy, about so many people thinking that meditation is is just relaxing. And, and we know that mindfulness meditation is is uh, quite popular this these days. And we talked a lot about the difference between a mindfulness meditation practice and an insight meditation practice or a Vipassana practice. Uh, and really, people need to start with uh, many people need to start with a mindfulness meditation practice practice because what they're doing within that practice is actually aligning those three bodies that we talked about, which was the physical body, the emotional body, and the mental body. So a lot of people, uh, I find a lot of people, especially at this retreat, because it was a beginning retreat, they say, oh, I, I can talk about meditation. I, I seem to talk about it more than I do it because when I try, oh, my thoughts just go crazy. I just really have a hard time creating a practice and sticking to it. And it's because these thoughts just arise again and again and again. So uh, really the getting our personality, really our thoughts, emotions, and our uh, physical body to a place where we are actually feeling good. And I wouldn't say relaxing, still alert, but we've got to get in touch first with uh, an awareness of our emotions and when they arise and if they are really ruling an experience. And being in meditation is a good way to observe that. And once we have our lower mind, meaning the thoughts that we think, like uh, our grocery list or what we've got to do today or what happened to us yesterday, those thoughts on the lower part of our mind, we've got to learn to allow allow those thoughts to pass. We've got to be able to observe that. And then we can move up to higher levels of the mind, which is abstract thought and intuition that you're talking about and creative thinking where we start to feel that there are those options and we start to really um, have a living awareness. You know, we really start to pick up on the subtleties of our everyday experience. So it really is a process and, um, and, and one that is, uh, is fundamentally necessary, I believe, for um, having an, an aware life, for creating, you know, an, a living awareness. I would agree. Uh, the word I'd like to underscore is focus, because mm, yes. I think that that's um, again to me part of what meditation practice is about: is a training of the mind to focus be able to screen out things that are not relevant to the particular situation and focus in on what is meaningful. And that, after all, is critical uh, when we talk about being hopeful because we have that that belief, that sense of optimism that uh, that change is possible. Uh, We believe in the, uh, the common good, what's going to happen. And we are trying to expand our options, and that comes about through focus, selective focus, so we don't get distracted by illusions or or glamours, but we stay with what is the truth. Clarity, I'm hearing in your words as well. Clarity. Mm-hmm. You, you've said so brilliantly uh, that uh, that meditation is really about removing distortions. We were talking about that quite a bit, the sea of fog of glamours or misleading thought forms. And so focus helps us with clarity and clarity leads us to the truth. And Dorothy, you know, we we are joyful. Joy, joy is our birthright, right? <laughs> That's right. It is the sound of our universe, the basic sound of our universe. And when we can become clear within ourselves, we realize that we are joyful beings. Happiness is liberating. It really doesn't have to be so hard, right? I mean, it, we, right. we definitely have to be on the lookout and we've got to have clarity. And, and we realize there's distortions all around. But goodness, if there's time that we can take out to really enjoy ourselves, right? To think positive thoughts and to, to find our joy, find our truth, align with our truth. Uh, we will see that, that, as I said at the beginning of the show, love you know, an understanding of our interconnectedness, that to me really is love and, and wonder and joy. They are there for us. It's just a matter of us creating space to allow them in. 
And one of the illusions that we need to be very careful of comes from uh, some of our older religious traditions, and that the illusion is that we grow through pain and suffering. Yes. That that yes. is our birthright, and that is not true. That is absolutely not true. <laughs> Dorothy, we're really at the end of the show, so it's it's uh, gone quite fast. I just want to let our listeners know that next week we, we're we're gonna we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna create uh, we've created options for ourselves. <laughs> we've got uh, we've got a wonderful writer and speaker and a columnist from Spirituality and Health, uh, a really amazing magazine that I love so much. And actually, I was just reading about um, qualities of audacious people in spirituality and health. It inspired me uh, <laughs> in that segment. Uh, Rabbi Rami Shapiro is going to join us as a guest next week, so that's going to be a little bit different. And I'm looking forward. To to that. Great. So, Dorothy, uh, I will say that uh, our listeners can can write in questions uh, at spiritfireradio.com. Uh, there is a button there to send in questions, or you can go directly to uh, spiritfireradio at spiritfire.com. And uh, we would look forward to hearing from you. Any comments or questions, please write in. Dorothy, anything before we say goodbye? Nope. This has been a wonderful four weeks, and I look forward to our last session on hope. Indeed. It's going to be fun. It's been great talking with you always, Dorothy. Lots of wisdom that comes to the surface. I look forward to next week. We'll talk then. Thank you for listening to Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, for your weekly guide to purposeful living and practical spirituality. Join hosts Steve Kramer and Dorothy Riddle as they shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in your everyday life. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. To learn more, visit spiritfireradio.com. 